The Midgard is a new headphone amplifier from the company that will get this video demonetized if I say their name in the first 30 seconds or so, and it's got quite a few big changes from the Magnus that it is replacing, including an interesting claim about not just being a low distortion amplifier, but reducing the distortion produced by your headphones. So let's talk about it. Coming in at $219, it's a direct replacement for the Magnus. With the same compact form factor, matte black chassis, it's essentially the same on the outside, but inside it's quite different. The Magnus was an op-amp based design, something that the manufacturer themselves have said they're not really a fan of. They prefer to use discrete designs that can be made to behave more linearly without the use of as much feedback. To the extent that they've even categorized products based around op-amps as heretical, and have often sold multiple versions of products such as the Magni in both op-amp based heresy and discrete non-heretical editions. But particularly at the more affordable end of the market, there's been quite an increase in demand in recent years for higher objectively performing products, which was why they went with the op-amp based approach for the Magnus. The Midgard though is replacing the Magnus entirely and it's using a discrete design, but shit are happy to do this because it's also objectively speaking, excellent. In my testing, it has slightly higher harmonic distortion than the Magnus did, but slightly lower noise, which might be beneficial for IEM users, for instance. And whilst you shouldn't ever use Cyanide as a single figure to judge whether a product is good or bad, there's a lot more to it than that. Just to show why shit is so confident in replacing the Magnus, the Cyanad figure of the Midgard is within 1 dB of the Magnus. It offers just over 4 watts of power into 32 ohms and 0.8 watts into 300 ohms, so shouldn't have much trouble driving the vast majority of headphones, whilst having noise quiet enough to comfortably run even quite sensitive in-ear monitors. What's quite unique about the design of the Midgard though is shit is using an approach that incorporates the driver of your headphones themselves into the feedback loop of the amplifier, meaning not only do you have an objectively very well behaving amp, but in theory, particularly around the driver resonance frequency, it can help to cancel out and reduce some of the distortions produced by your headphones themselves. Now we did some testing on this aspect and we'll talk about that in a sec. In terms of I.O., the Midgard is using the same layout as the Magnus, so it's using a Woolwart AC power supply. Don't connect an aftermarket DC power supply to this, it is AC, not DC. It has both single-ended and balanced inputs, and it can also be used as a preamplifier with XLR and single-ended outputs. The one thing that I'm not particularly keen on about the physical build of this amp is the volume knob. It's got quite a scratchy feel to it when you're adjusting volume, and that wasn't particularly pleasant. The Midgard is currently only available in black, so you might not be able to match it with your other shit gear if you've got silver units, though personally, I prefer the black finish more anyway. At the front, there is the usual XLR and single-ended quarter-inch output, but this is actually a single-ended amplifier internally. It's not a balanced or differential drive amplifier. However, the two outputs do still behave differently, and that's because the halo feedback approach that shit is using requires separate negative return paths for each driver in order to be able to incorporate them into the feedback loop. And that means when you're using the XLR output, the driver of your headphones is being incorporated into the feedback loop of the amplifier, and if you use the single-ended output, it's effectively just acting as a normal amp. And just to confirm, you can still get full power from either output. Does this make a difference? Well, I've got to be honest, on first listen, I was just not not able to tell the difference between the two headphone amp outputs, and I tried with various different headphones and various different genres of music, and I could not hear anything which I thought was significant, and anything I thought maybe I could hear, I was not confident that I would ever be able to tell apart in a blind ABX test. So, to do a bit of an objective comparison, we did some testing with the BNK 5128. Shit mentioned that this correction effect should be most evident with headphones that have a varying impedance versus frequency, i.e. dynamic headphones should be affected more, and planar magnetic headphones should be affected less. So we selected the Focal Elia for testing. We ran a sweep to look at the total harmonic distortion produced by the headphone. This graph shows the individual harmonics, and the black line shows the total harmonic distortion produced by the headphone. We tested both outputs to check the effect when the halo feedback was and was not incorporating the driver into the feedback loop, and we can unfortunately see no clear differences. At almost any frequency, distortion was near enough identical, with the only differences visible simply being within margin of error or run-to-run -run variation. And in fact, when just measuring the distortion electrically, so without the headphones and 5128, when setting my dummy load to produce a more reactive load, rather than a static, purely resistive load, Distortion remains effectively unchanged, which on one hand, that's great. A lot of amps will actually degrade quite a bit in performance when you make the load more reactive, so it's great to see that that's not happening here, but there's still no difference between the TRS and XLR outputs. 
The next step would have been to play a single test tone close to the resonance frequency of the driver and do an FFT. Look at the individual harmonics there and see if there was any changes, but unfortunately the unit that Resolve had when testing died and started producing huge amounts of distortion no matter what it was doing, so that prevented any further testing. Hopefully that's just a one-off issue. The unit that I've got here is still fine, even after torturing it for a while, but from the data that we've got, we can unfortunately see that there's seemingly not much, if any, effect from the Halo feedback. It's a shame that this particular aspect didn't seem to work out as well as we'd hoped, but that's not to take away from the fact that it is still an objectively excellently performing amplifier, and that then leaves the question, how does it sound subjectively? Well, pretty excellent. I was not really a fan of the original Magnus. I found it to have a lot of the subjective drawbacks typical of high feedback op amp based designs. It was pretty clinical, it was pretty sterile, and kind of had some etchy treble thing going on as well. I just was not a fan of it, but this is a magnificent improvement. The Midgard to my ear has a slightly bass focused sound. Weighty and hard hitting, but not bloomy or muddy. It's not quite as tight and controlled as a Gashelli Erish 2 for instance, but with a little bit more meat on the bones to it. It's an overall more full-bodied presentation than a lot of the competitors at this price point, and that's something I prefer, and I think a lot of other people are going to prefer as well. It has something of a focus on the texture of mid-range elements. It focuses your attention a little bit more on the characteristics that make up the timbre of vocals and instruments, rather than the sense of environment and space. It's not quite as airy sounding as other amplifiers, but overall I'd say that the presentation gives a more natural vocal presentation in particular. Male vocals on this really stand out as just outright better than something like the Gashelli Airish 2 or a Topping A30 Pro. The level of detail retrieval and outright resolution that you get is really good for the money. It's kind of knocking on the door of the much more expensive Synxer SA1. Now, that's an amplifier which I thought was a bit more neutral in presentation overall, and as I said, slightly more resolving. The biggest difference was that that's a bit more of an airy open sounding amp, whereas the Midgard leans towards a more intimate presentation. And that was interesting because it meant that whilst for certain headphones, like the Sennheiser HD800S or a Hyperman Aria Stealth that can take advantage of that extra air and spaciousness and the extra resolution, they worked a little bit better on the SA1. But for headphones like a Sennheiser HD600 or a ZMF Atrium, for instance, which is a headphone I've been using a lot lately, the slightly more intimate and vocal focused nature of the Midgard complemented what those headphones are doing really well, and I would just outright take a Midgard as my preferred choice to run them. That tactile sounding mid-range and low end just hit all the right buttons for me. As far as what might cause this slightly more intimate presentation, in my experience I found it's typically one of two things, either high even order harmonic distortion, which as we saw from the tests earlier, it's not really that, but the other thing is rising distortion into higher frequencies, and if we look at total harmonic distortion versus frequency on the Midgard, we can see that indeed, as we go out past 1kHz towards 20kHz, total harmonic distortion is increasing. Still quite low across the board, but that could potentially be the reason as to why this has a slightly warmer, more intimate sound. I like the Midgard a lot. It's different from most of the other options around this price point, which often use the same op amps and very similar designs, and the Midgard's approach of making an amp which is more linear without the need for excessive levels of feedback, to my ear, does seem to produce a better sounding result. Especially in that a lot of the more clinical sounding amplifiers I tend to find give me a bit more listening fatigue, and after an hour or two I often have to take a break for a bit. But with the Midgard, I was able to listen basically all day, and I didn't get any kind of listening fatigue whatsoever, except for when I put a particularly fatiguing headphone on. If you are just wanting the highest Synad that you can get, then the Topping A30 Pro will give you a couple dB more there, and in fact I think Shit's own Magni Heretic will as well, but this does sound better to me. Shit has done a fantastic job with this product, and it offers excellent value for money. It's a shame that the Halo feedback design doesn't really seem to make much difference in terms of the behaviour of your headphones, as was suggested, but it seems that the design still results in excellent objective performance and a subjective sound that I preferred over most other competitors around this price point. So to be honest, I don't really mind too much anyway. It sounds fantastic as it is, still objectively great, and you're not losing anything versus other amps anyway. The only question that still lingers from our testing is reliability. As said, hopefully Resolve's issue is just a one-off thing, the unit that I've still got is fine. These will be in the hands of plenty of people anyway, so make sure that you keep an eye on threads like this one on the headphones.com forum. If you're in the market for a headphone amp under about $500, I'd strongly recommend considering the shit Midgard.
I hope you enjoyed that video. If you've got any questions about the Midgard or anything else relating to gear, music, or anything else at all, come and say hey on our Discord server or the Headphones.com forum, and I and other Wiggly Air enthusiasts will endeavour to help. I'm Golden Sound, you're watching The Headphone Show by Headphones.com. Until next time. <laughs>